I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. This is Learning AI for the Over 50. This is episode two, and we're going to talk about five things you need to know about prompts. So this is a series of 10 episodes I'm doing about how to learn AI if you're over 50. Last week in episode one, we talked about setting up Copilot, Gemini, or ChatGPT. This week, in episode two, we're going to talk about prompts. Now, in the description, I'll put the list to the playlist, which will have all 10 uh, videos on there, and I'll also put the link to episode one. So this is episode two in our series. Let's get started. So since last week, I'm sure you've had a chance to try out AI, any of the three we discussed earlier. You're probably pretty impressed, right? You simply said whatever you wanted to say, and oh my gosh, the answer you got was pretty impressive. So what you did was two things. First of all, you had a question to ask AI, either ChatGPT, Gemini, or Copilot. And that was, an, that was a question, and then you got a response. So there's two parts. There's the question, and then there's the response. Let's deal with the response first of all. Well, the response occurred far, far away on a big computer or many, lots of computers that processed your request and came up with a great answer for you. It's not done on your machine. It's done in uh, one of those large computers in a far, far away land. So the first part, though, was when you asked it the question. Now, that is very interesting because many of you remember all the commands, those Boolean commands we did when we did searches in Google. This is pretty cool because it's so simple, you don't need to know anything. You just chat to it, and of course it gives you the answer. Well, that's called a chat bot. Both Copilot, Gemini, and ChatGPT are all chat bots. Now, what's a chatbot? That's a new terminology that we haven't really used a lot in the past. Well, you can chat to a bot. What's a bot? Bot is a thing that's going to process the information for you, and you can just chat to it. And that's what we call a chat bot. Now, this is really at the heart of how this whole process works because it's so easy for you to give it, because it's so easy for you to um, ask questions. Now, whether you're on your mobile device or whether you're on your PC, I would suggest that there's usually a microphone button there and you just hit the microphone and talk to it. It might take a little practice to do that. You can as well do that on your PC if you have a microphone connected. It's a lot faster than typing it out or using a two-finger uh, typing on your phone. Just speak to it. It's very easy to do, and I'm sure you do that all the time on your phone. Just ask it questions. Now, the information that you ask it about is called a prompt, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And let me give you some tips on how to phrase the prompts. And you'll get better at this as you go along, but you should know these five tips. All right, the first is the art of clarity. When crafting prompts, clarity is king. AI systems perform best when given specific, unambiguous instructions. So giving a command like, what should I take when I want to go camping this weekend? Well, you're going to get a very vague response. But what about, I'm going camping this weekend, it's going to be raining, I'm backpacking up to a lake, I'll be there three days, and on my return, I'm driving home. Specific information like that will get you better responses. So as a pro tip today, use detail language and provide context. If you want a summary, tell it. If you want an analysis or you want a creative output, mention it explicitly. And if you're, if you're getting it to write a, a blog or some information, tell it the audience that it's going to be writing it for. So for example, if I want to show a group of people how to copy and paste in Windows, I may get it to write the blog post for me, and I'm going to tell it that the group that it'll be watching this 
will be beginners. And then it'll be a lot different if I wrote that again and said it was for advanced users. In other words, tell it what you want to do. Now, the second item is length matters. Prompts can range from a single sentence to detailed paragraphs, depending on your needs. A concise prompt works well for straightforward tasks, but for complex queries, include additional details to guide the AI. For example, instead of saying, plan a vacation, you could say, plan a week-long vacation to Italy, focusing on cultural landmarks and local cuisine with a moderate budget. So the pro tip here is strike a balance between brevity and detail. Overloading your prompt with excessive information can confuse the AI. Point three, experimentation leads to perfection. If the response isn't what you expected, tweak your prompt and try again. For instance, if you said, summarize this article but found the summary too brief, you could phrase it, your prompt to say, provide a detailed summary of the article focusing on key arguments and examples. So the pro tip here is keep experimenting with phrasing, tone, and structure to optimize the output. Point four, context enhances responses. AI excels when given proper context. If you're working on a project or topic, set the stage for your query. For instance, asking, explain the benefits of renewable energy might yield a generic response. Instead, specify, explain the benefits of renewable energy in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in urban areas. Again, the pro tip, the more relevant context you provide, the more tailored and insightful the AI's response will be. Point five is tone and style can be specified. AI is versatile and could can adapt to different tones and styles, whether you need a professional email or a casual blog post or social media caption, include tone instructions for your prompt. For example, write a formal cover letter for a software engineer position, or draft a witty tweet about AI trends. So the pro tip is think about your audience and the medium and guide the AI accordingly to the tone and style that you want. So those are five tips for you that will help you make better prompts. Now, before we finish up today, I want to also mention that you should save your prompt. If you get a good one and you make a great prompt and say, oh, that's wonderful, then I would copy that over into a document file and save the prompt for future use. Also, in a lot of software now, the prompt is available for saving. For example, I was in Canva yesterday and looking for some images. Now in Canva, which is a graphics program, you can see all sorts of AI generated images are there. I think I was looking at one which was a pink elephant dancing through them, some daffodils with a blue sky in the background. Now this was a cool picture and thought I might use it on one of my, um, on one of my videos. So by clicking on the picture, it gave me the prompt and I could actually save the prompt, which was about a paragraph and a half on what that author had done to create that image. So when I go back and I want to recreate the image, I just have to copy and paste that prompt into the AI software. But suppose, for example, instead of daffodils, I could pick tulips or I could change the background sky to a different color or even change the color of the image. So all this could be done by changing one word in the prompt. So look for saving prompts. This brings us to another topic about the industry of prompts. As we get more complicated prompts and as we move on, I'm going to be showing you a lot more things you can do, such as uh, having your uh, data be such as having your data be imported into a spreadsheet or a database and the many features that AI can do rather than just simple questions. Now, there are a lot of applications for this. So, of course, a lot of people are writing prompts and there are many websites that have free and paid for prompts. 
And if you consider uh, architectural services, engineering services, a lot of services out there that can benefit by using prompts in AI, it's really the sky's the limit. So you will find professional sites that have prompts organized for specific tasks that you want to do. And as I said, some of these are paid and some of them are free. So that is, in summary, what a prompt is, how you can make prompts, and how you can actually get prompts to do more things that maybe you really didn't understand they did. Now, next week, we're going to talk about what you shouldn't ask AI for. That'll be an interesting one. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And until we see you again, have a great day. Thank you.